Welcome back, everyone, to the Music City Open. We're here in round three. This is the back half of the lead car of FPO. We're out at Mill Ridge Disc Golf Course in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Sarah Hokum here with Zoe and Ike. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Looking to see how the action unfolds, but let's take a look at the leaderboard first. Haley King, again, 12 down, five down on the round. This is an incredible show that she's putting on and kind of running away with a little bit of a lead. Right, bogey free on the front and we're on to hole 10. It's a par three, 243 feet. A little bit tricky, even though it is only 243 feet away, players must choose either to go through what looks like a triple mando but is not one. And so you also have the choice to go up and over. Sidearm or a turnover is the play. Haley up first. She'll be throwing her zone on a hyzer. And she chooses to go through that wooden kind of interface. <laughs> She's parked though. And Juliana going to throw a kite. Yeah, the backhand is pretty tough because that, that triple mando of sorts, it's not a triple mando, the fence post up there really limits the height of the shot, making that much more difficult. I'm throwing a vanish. Nice. Great ground action there and looking pretty parked for the birdie. And Valerie up next, also going to go with the sidearm. Leaves it a little early, ends up just up the fairway, up in that tree. She'll have a fairly simple approach here to save the par. And there is no two meter rule in effect here at the Music City Open, so this is for Valerie's second shot. She's throwing a Nova disc that she throws very well, and she puts it really close. Good recovery. Nobody chose to go up and over on your card. Yeah, I was actually surprised you even mentioned that because it looks like to me that it's a little blocked to go up and over, but I guess some people are choosing that line. I, I'd say 30% of our field probably did. Okay. Yeah. Haley for birdie. And she's got it. Boy, she's on a tear right now. That puts her at minus six on the round and 13 overall. She is extending her lead. And Hokum taking one back there. I'm happy to get that birdie. Birdies are hard, tough to get out here. And Valerie for par. A nice up and down. Julia and Juliana also tapping in the par. 33% of the field got this birdie today, so really gettable. Looking for a few more birdies on this one tomorrow in the fourth round. Haley from a bit of a stagger stance cashes in with her Luna. And here's hole 11. It's a par four, 559 feet. There's a left gap and a right gap, but they're both only about you know, five or six feet wide. And this is a placement shot off the tee. Because of the low ceiling coming out that first gap, nobody can actually get the height to throw over that first set of trees. And then we have kind of a secondary portion to the fairway. Again, you've got to choose your the right side or the left side fairway. The drone's flying over the left side because it is the more open and potentially more intended fairway. Yeah, I keep thinking that right side is a bit of a sucker gap. But sometimes that's where you have to throw to. Depending on where, how far you get to the right. Whoa. So, yeah, Haley almost hits the... <laughs> the next card <laughs> that, that was her heat and i don't know how she was able to turn that with that such that low ceiling but she threw it really well that was an impressive shot 
I'm not happy with that. That was that was a trace. I was looking to throw a hyzer up the left side, but I caught the middle tree and kicked left. Juliana throwing the kite, similar to the last throw. Looks like she was a little off balance on the tee pad there. Yeah, most of these, the tee pads are really grippy, but there's always a little bit of a drop off at the end of them. Yeah, I was referring to that as a dismount because um, I, I follow through pretty hard on my drives. <laughs> Valerie shot just on the edge of the fairway there. She can step out for an open look. I'm trying to pitch to that right side gap. Still give my chance, myself a chance to get up and down for par. And Juliana makes it just to the edge there. So she's able to step out and have some swinging room for her next shot. And well placed. Throws her putter right to the gap. I'm still blown away by that tee shot by Haley that got so far up the fairway. Yeah, we had been waiting on that hole for quite a while. That was one of the holes that you end up waiting on. And so we weren't, I mean, we figured they were clear. I mean, they were clear for most human shots, but I guess not for <laughs> Haley. Hailstorm. Going up and over, but I pushed it a little far. I guess I needed to throw that a little higher and I'm in the left side rough, which is really rough. Juliana looks like she's sizing up that right side smaller gap. Here's a good look at that gap, and you can see how tiny it is. She misses this line a little bit, but she's still in the open area on the right side of that tiny gap. This is Haley's second, by the way. Wow. But even Haley is human. Throws it into the left side. Doesn't quite hit the gap. But she'll have some work to do to get out of there. This is really tough position for Valerie here. This is Valerie's third. She threw a great tee shot, but then missed the gap on her second. And this looks rough. Looks painful, too. There's a lot of thorns in there. Yeah, I'm wearing pants out here, even if it's hot. Good choice. Also, there's chiggers and uh, some other things out here that make life a little bit more difficult. She's lining up that forehand roller again. She had luck with good luck with that earlier in the round. And maintains that actually was a pretty great out. Yeah, and she's got a putt to save her par. Haley on her third shot. Giving it a run. Puts herself pin high to the right of the basket for a putt for par. This playing as the second most difficult hole on the course. JK just choosing to pitch up. And she's just got a little putt there. I was having trouble finding my disc and even getting to my disc. Yeah, this is a good camera view to just display exactly how rough this uh, rough really is. I mean, you can, can't even really see Sarah that well. And I've got nothing but just a little roller. That worked out pretty good. Not what, about 18 feet away there. Yeah. This is Valerie to save her par. Little jumper slamming it in. Oh, yeah. and that was a bogey. My bad. But a great bogey save as it is. And Juliana also. Oh. Uh, just a little timid again on the putt. And Haley looking to walk away with the only par on the round on the on the card. <laughs> and she gets it. Still bogey free through 11. I like how she gave her third shot there a little bit of a run. She has some strokes to play with, and if she would have cashed that in, whew, impressive hole. 
Nice bogey save there for Sarah. And look at that rough, just not wanting to let go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get out of there. <laughs> Juliana also now with the double bogey. So rough hole, second most difficult. And the only birdie on the day was Missy Gannon. Wow, huge shout out Look to Missy. Look at this putt from, from Valerie. Wow, so much power. Yeah, just outside of the circle, she slams the basket. And moving on to hole 12. It's a par three, 305 feet. And the drone here flies through the intended gap, although there's little tiny gaps right and left of that. Um, not, I didn't see any players choose to throw over the top. 305 feet is a pretty significant distance to be doing that because you do not want to hyzer out right or left. It is a pretty straight shot. Haley peering the gap. Leaves it just short, but that's about 25 feet. Well in Haley's comfortable range. I'm throwing a Crave, just looking to hit that gap. Well done. Put it up a little bit high so it faded a little bit to the right, but that's only about 20 feet. Valerie up next. Also hits the gap perfectly. Beautiful shot, throws it past the basket with a nice little comebacker. And rounding out the card, Juliana. She's throwing a road runner, getting a significant amount of turn. And even fading back past the basket, but great shot nonetheless. Lead card showing us how it's done. Everybody peered that gap. Haley up first for birdie. Gets another one wow. to go 14 down. And didn't that look easy for her? I mean, just she a did. casual swing. And just look how excited she is. <laughs> she can barely contain herself. <laughs> <laughs> and Juliana up next for her birdie. Oh. Having a little, little trouble finding her putting stroke today. Valerie looking to bounce back from that previous hole. And her putt does it. Birdie for Valerie. All right. I'm also looking to get out that eraser and give myself a better score. And birdie it is. Able to do it. That was a great putt. So three birdies on the card, and playing, Juliana to clean up her par. Playing as the second easiest hole on the course, 39% birdies. So you're definitely losing strokes on folks if you don't cash in on this one. Taking a look at that birdie for Valerie one more time. And we will be right back after a word from our sponsors. When I walk up to the tee, I have these game plans. I think I'm gonna land in these same areas every single time, but you never know. Having the Bushnell Rangefinder, no matter where I land, gives me that extra level of confidence. I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G Craft Jerky since I was 16 years old. Whether I'm at home or on the road, Double G Craft Jerky is the snack that I go for. I've actually found myself eating Double G Craft Jerky on my long drives to the next tournament. We all know Double G's got a big arm, but he's also got a big heart. Every bag of Double G Jerky that you buy supports children's disc golf and goes to a great cause. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. And we are back on hole 13. It's a par three, 277 feet. Uh, relatively open on the left side fairway, right side has the wall of trees, and then a really tricky green to enter. Very, very narrow gaps. I mean, I think that main middle gap is probably all of 10 to 12 feet wide, but a very gettable hole at only 277 feet. 
Haley up first. This is her stalker thrown, thrown on a hyzer. Leaves it out a little bit right. She'll have an obstructed view, but still a putt for birdie. I'm throwing in insanity. And I kind of push it a little left into the tree line. That is not good. It does punch through a bit, but it is not good over there. Lots of trees in the way. Juliet. Oh, Valerie up next. Looking for that to turn more. Needs to turn more. She gets knocked down, but on the edge of the tree line for the birdie. Yeah, she should be able to have a straddle out there. And Juliana. Going with the Roadrunner. Gets the turn. And it's fading back, but it hits the trees. Not Gets knocked down. And she'll be outside the circle, but with a pretty open look. Choosing to go with the sidearm putter shot just to put it underneath the basket. Well done. Wow. That is this very is so obstructed. Bad. I'm actually um, yeah, just throwing my body at the ground trying <laughs> to get the putter up there. Full I commitment. actually couldn't even hardly stand behind my mini. In fact, I had to hold on to one of the trees behind me to avoid um, foot faulting. It was crazy. Valerie with a little sidearm. And Haley, just outside of the circle, you can see the tassel there. And it looks like she has a little alley. Can she do it? Not quite. But again, par is a great score. And it'll be Haley up first to clean up on hole 13. Bunch of tap-ins for par. I think this is one that everyone on this card could get, but we just didn't today. And it's definitely no easy feat just to get into the green. Those gaps are small. 17% of the uh, field did birdie this hole though today. Only 17%, that kind of surprises me. We'll see what happens in round four if that goes up. I really liked Juliana's choice here. Kind of something that flexes around that right side tree and then was, it was coming in perfectly until it caught those upper trees. Hole 14, par four, 481 feet. There is a very small or tight gap to get through. Um, Semi obstructed with that kind of bushy tree in the middle of it, just out of the entry. And then once you've gotten out, wide open field on the left hand side as the fairway shapes you over to the right this is a very appropriate par four and gettable as long as you can get out the gap yeah and the farther left you are off the gap the better your next shot could be if you're too far right you can't really see the basket so you're kind of throwing blind around a corner Haley threw the zeus and that was a great choice perfect shot yeah this is a very difficult shot for a lefty or sidearm. And I am just trying to hit the gap. Great job there. What was that? It turned over. It was over a relay. Good. Okay. Really flippy fairway, slow fairway. Valerie looking at Haley's line. He puts that hyzer angle on it appropriately and gets a good amount left. And Juliana going with a wraith, also looking for that carry left. I like this. Mm -hmm. Give her some ground action. Yes. Very well done here by top card. So just around the corner, probably a little over 200 feet. It's 200 about 260. 20. Oh, okay. When I uh, ranged it, I didn't get very far out of the gap. So I've got a circle two putt just outside circle one. Valerie choosing to go with the forehand as well and gets it in there really close great shot by her and Juliana not so much on the forehand but she has great control of her backhand and throws this beautiful shot putting it right by the pin
And Haley can she can pretty almost much see yeah, the basket. She yeah. can almost see it. Looks like she's pulling out her zone here. I think this is a is buzz, that? actually. Okay. It might be even a buzz OS. I'm not totally sure. I think it's one of Bear Heart's signature discs. So just outside of the circle here for Sarah. Oh, just barely high. I was happy with the attempt. Yes. I need to put this closer, though, next time. <laughs> <laughs> and Haley for birdie. No Beautiful problem. Beautiful stroke. Getting another birdie going 15 under. Oh, so enthusiastic. <laughs> zero bogeys. You can see how happy she is. Actually, at this point in the round, we're 14 holes in and we've waited on about half of the holes. It's been moving very slowly. And it's, as you can see, it's the sun's going down. It's starting to get darker. Probably getting closer to our fourth hour of play. Yes. So I think players are really just kind of grinding it out at this point. I know I am. Well, and not only is it physically demanding with the, the lengthy time of the round, but it's very, very emotionally demanding. You've got to use a lot of mental energy just to attack this course and power through it. Another look at that beautiful birdie there. And we are on to hole 15, par four, 529 feet. It's relatively open to get to this gap. Nobody's throwing over it. That's way too far and way too high to try to do. So players are either choosing to place it or just go for it right off the tee. And then after you've gone through the gap, off to the left-hand side in a mostly open field with a tree wall in the background, here's the basket. Pretty appropriately um, labeled par four. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good hole. I like that you have to throw a lot of different shots. You see Haley going with the sidearm. Unfortunately, she pushes that left into the tree line, and it is very difficult over there. Pretty much only option there is just to pitch up to the gap. Valerie also trying to get to the gap, but pushes it a little bit left, and she'll be obstructed there. Juliana up next, throwing her Mako. And this is pretty good. She might have wanted to go a little bit farther left, but even from that angle, it actually opens up the line to the green. Yeah, being on the right side of the gap is the right side to be on. I'm throwing a trace. Give her the fade, and there it is. Well-placed shot. And I think I actually would have been wanted to be a little bit farther right. And Valerie opting wow. to go up and over the top with all that huge open field room. Pretty so, fantastic choice. Yeah, she's pin high, but, you know, about 150 feet away. Juliana has a look here if she can just weave through the gap. This is the ideal position. Great shot. Comes up a little bit short. But she's in circle two with a look for birdie. This is going to be a pretty drastic turnover here. Yeah, this is my flippiest fairway. But not flippy enough as it airs out to about 80 feet pin high. And Haley should be up next. And what is Haley going to try to do here? She is going to go up and over. Yeah, and she was asking everyone to watch what she was doing because she wasn't sure she was going to make it. And she didn't throw the shot properly, but did sneak through to the front side for a long approach to try to get her par. And with how thick those trees are, Pretty, pretty lucky and stoked to even just get on the other side, and she's now got herself an attempt at the par. Valerie on her third shot, throwing her Nova. Puts it nice and close. I'm throwing an Envy.
I miss it a little bit wide, but I'm still pretty close, tucked into that tree line on the back side. Yeah, that tree line is well inside the circle there. Juliana for birdie. And no work left to do there to clean up her par. I'm a little obstructed here, so I have to take a knee, but it's definitely a makeable putt. Just a little bit low. I am really struggling to focus at this point in the round. I don't even realize that Haley's turn is Haley's turn right now. <laughs> and I apologize to her right now. <laughs> Everybody's getting hungry. Everybody's tired. Haley He's, tapping in the par, keeping her round bogey free. Great up and down. And yeah, a bogey free round at this point in the on hole 15. That is so impressive. Everyone else will tap out the pars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be silly, but I'm having trouble containing myself. Take a look at Juliana throwing that Mako. She is so smooth. I love watching her throw. And we'll be right back after this. Love getting outside and challenging yourself to become better? How about spending time with family and friends? We're just marveling at the pure joy of flight. Then you've come to the right place at the right time. Join the PGA. You've seen them in the hands of professionals, helping them compete at the highest level. Whale Sacks is a female-owned small business, handmade in the USA. We are dedicated to outstanding grip for all disc golfers. And we're back here on hole 16. It's a par three, 331 feet. Fairly narrow gap here, opening up just a bit, but still having, having to place your shot really well in order to take a right hand turn and to get to this green. Wow. And no, we're not putting on the bullseye baskets there. <laughs> These baskets were just put out to give us a mark for practice because there are a couple different placements. Haley up first, going her Zeus. And she takes the wide route. This surprised me. Yeah. I actually didn't realize that was a viable strategy, but she makes it look easy and puts herself in position for a birdie. Valerie kind of airing it out a bit. She wanted that to be a little bit more on the hyzer side, but trickles down and also has a look for birdie. Juliana throwing a sidewinder. This is the line. Yes, inside gap, giving herself a look. Looking at the edge of circle two, or edge of circle one. This is my trace. I'm looking to flex this to the left of the straight tree, but instead I throw it into the straight tree. I need a timeout right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure many of us out there can relate to that. Getting close to the end of the round. This is a reactor, just pitching it up there, doing a little tree trimming in the process. <laughs> and now Valerie with a jump putt bid. And a good shot nonetheless, putting her there for the par. Juliana from circle two. Little bit of a misfire, but easy par putt. And Haley to go to 16 down. Little bit of a death putt. Hits the cage though. Really close, good wow. run at it. Landing nice and safely. As you can see, there is a downslope behind the basket. I'll be in for par. Haley also tapping out her par putt, as will the other two card mates. This whole playing about the middle of the difficulty and surprisingly for how short it is, there was only one birdie. Congrats to Vanessa Van Dyken. Wow. Great. That I expect that number to go up in our final day. A look at 
Sarah's par here. A good up and down. And we are on to hole 17. Par 4. And it is 644 feet away. OB lining the entire right side of the fairway and just that natural thick OB tree line or natural OB tree line on the left. Players have got to know where they want to place it. Left side is good if you're a righty dominant player, just to give yourself a good shot at the second shot at the basket. Haley up first. Oh, I'm choosing the inside line. I kind of half expected her to throw a really big hyzer around the outside. And she might have wanted that as she trickles into the left side rough. That makes that second shot a little bit more difficult. She's not going to have a full pull through. Valerie going with a shrike on a flip up. Beautiful shot. Hoping to stick. Also hyzers oh. into that left side, but doesn't really get punished. She'll have a little bit of obstruction, but not too bad. Juliana going with a roadrunner. Looking to get that carry outright, but that needs to come back. Come on back. Yes. Ooh. Great shot. <laughs> Good distance on that, too. I'm throwing an Insanity, which typically has a little bit of left carry before it hyzers back. And I'm safe. Yeah. It's kind of a difficult hole for a sidearm as the disc wants to carry out of bounds. This but is this, a, this is good position for your second shot. Yeah, I'm kind of out of range for a birdie, but I'm able to pitch it to the fairway and I'll have a short approach to save a par. And Juliana's got that tree in her way, so she needs to flex this, but it needs to come back after she turns it. And oh. it's coming back, but just a little too late. Out Goes of bounds there for JK. With a step out sidearm, Valerie just looking to be in good position here. So the birdie kind of out of play for her as well. And same thing here for Haley. Just a little step out. She's throwing her stalker. Pushing that left side, and it trickles out, but well outside circle two, so no easy putts for birdie. Valerie with her Nova on her third shot. Puts it right under the pin. Part. For Sarah's third shot here. Very nicely done. Haley also on her third. Giving it a little bit of a run. Oh, just short. Really just a few inches from making that putt. Yeah. Juliana taking her meter. And she's in circle two. This is to save her par. Gathering her confidence, knowing that she wants to get up and down. And actually just safely placing it there. So much trouble can happen. And that'll be good for par. And par is a great score on hole 17. If only 44% of our field did par it. 33% bogey rate. Yeah, I'm actually showing 50% oh. bogey rate. I must be looking at the wrong one. 50% bogey or worse. There we go. 44% pars on this hole. <laughs> Unfortunate bogey for Juliana. But shout out to Katrina and Lindsay Fish who got this birdie on the day. Wow, excellent birdie for those females. So really taking two skilled shots and a putt to get this one. Very difficult hole, leading us into our final hole. 
which playing as the first most difficult hole, we've had a lot of second most difficult holes, like three holes are tied for that that position, but this one is the doozy. And it is decision-making time on hole 18, par three, only 309 feet away, but as you can see from the flyover, here's the decision. Do you go for it as it is playing more like an island green, completely surrounded by OB, or do you take the layup? And the layup is not that easy of a shot to pull off either. Haley King. Going for it. This is her onyx. She leaves it out a little bit left that needed to flex. She's going to be outside of the inbounds area, throwing her third from not too far off the tee. Valerie also, very skilled thrower, going for the green. She gets the turn on this it. This is a great shot. Excellent. And, I mean, that is a birdie look. Woo! Great shot. So far, two of the players going for it. Sarah opting for the layup zone. Yeah, the sidearm line there, or lefty line, is pretty uh, technical. I'm going to just try to walk away with a par. Juliana, however, technicality is one of her strengths. Look at that shot. Pures the gap. Heisering in and totally in bounds. Impressive there by top card. Three out of the four going for it. We had multiple cards where all four competitors chose the layup. So Haley going up about 50 feet. Looking to hit the green on this shot for her third. She clips the last set oh, of bushes no. and is out of bounds again and will essentially rethrow her shot. And for a bogey free round up to this point, two OB penalties for King. It really is a difficult final hole to, you know, know that it's looming and can cost you so many strokes. Get Haley, down. She's making the adjustment. Playing it much safer, leaving herself a putt. This is a shock. Throwing around the outside. And sticking the landing zone. JK for her birdie putt. She's happy to lay that up and walk away with an easy putt. We did have quite a gallery there, so it makes this putt a little bit ner even more nerve-wracking. Nerve this is Haley for her six. Whew! Excellent, though, to save that. That was a death putt. I mean, it's a drastic downhill decline, and she made it. So doing all that work to get to minus 15 and then losing three strokes to the field on the final hole. I think she's probably going to have a way to clean that up for tomorrow, but it will make for an exciting finish. This is for par. Great par to capture there. Happy to be finished with the round as the sun is yeah, almost down. I am this happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't think I've ever been ha that happy for a par. Valerie for birdie. Look at that park job. So good. Valerie, one of few birdies on the round. Paige Pierce joining her with that too. Only two birdies to finish. And again, what an awesome finishing hole. Decision-making time, huge risk-reward. And then the mental game of knowing that that is waiting for you on that final hole that, you know, big stroke swings can happen. You can get the two, or as we saw with one of the most talented people in the field, you can get a six. Absolutely, Mill Ridge proving to be a very tricky course. But Haley's still on top after all the work she did earlier in the round, so she's at a minus 12, finishing the round at minus five. Macy Veladiez also shooting a minus five, going up all the way up to minus nine and taking solo second place. Me and Missy will also join them on the lead card for tomorrow. Let's take a look at Haley's drive on hole two. Crushing it. Earning that long drive replay of the day. Wow. Get yourself some jerky and you might be able to throw like that. <laughs>
Thank you. A huge shout out to Central Coast for covering the FPO post production. Please join us for the final round tomorrow. It's going to be an exciting one out at Mill Ridge. <laughs>